Hello and welcome. I want you to become master of each and every services of AWS. I don't want you to go through the basic knowledge of particular service. Now you don't know that which kind of question you are going to get when you will go for the interview. They can ask you questions about any services and any particular setting of services. Now in this case, if you just have basic knowledge, you will be in trouble. So, I don't want you to be in trouble. We are going to talk about each and every options of CloudFront distribution. Yesterday, we already created CloudFront distribution, but we just use all mandatory option because I want you to understand how CloudFront can increase performance of our website. Today, we are going to create CloudFront distribution again, but this time, we are going to understand all these options carefully. Here, I am going to start with origin settings. Then, step by step, we will talk about each and every settings as well. So, let's start with origin first. Here, to understand origin, I just divided this video into the four chapters. So, we are going to start with the chapter number one, origin domain. If you go to the distribution setting, the first option you are going to get over here is origin domain. So, let's understand this. Origin domain name setting specifies the DNS name or the endpoint of the origin server from which CloudFront fetches the original content. As you know that CloudFront is actually kind of distributor. CloudFront will get the content from the origins. Origins can be anything from this particular list and then it will distribute this content to the cache location. Now when user want to access this content, they will get this from the nearby age location. Now, when you are creating your distribution, you have to specify your origin from, from where you are getting your original content. So, how you can specify this? You can specify this from here. Now, if you look at this carefully here, you are getting some options are highlighted here and some are grayed out. Why? Because if you have this resources, let's say that I have my S3 bucket, so I can use this as an origin. So, here I am getting this option as a highlighted option. But if you look at this elastic cloud, elastic load balancer is grayed out. Why? Because in my AWS account, I don't have any load balancer so that's why it is grayed out i have api gateway so it is available i don't have any media store container so that's why it is grayed out so whatever the resources whatever the origin you have it is available over here the, the origin you don't have it is grayed out so you have to create origin first and then you have to come over here and then it will be highlighted okay so this is like the first option we have very simple process i hope you got complete idea about this now Let's talk about our chapter number two, known as origin path. If you go to this particular uh, CloudFront distribution setting, you will get this origin path option here. And as you know that this is actually optional. Why it is optional? Let me explain you this so you will get complete understanding. Let's say that I am using S3 bucket as an origin. Right now, I am inside my S3 bucket. Now, in this S3 bucket, I have my index.html, which is my, uh, my home page. If you look at this, I have my home page directly on the root of the bucket. If you have your index.html or home page directly on the root of the bucket, you do not need to specify origin, origin path. But let's say that here I have one folder, you can create folder from here. I have one folder web here and my index.html file is inside this particular folder. Now in this case, when CloudFront is coming to your origin, it is actually fetching all the content from the root. They don't know about, about your plan. They don't know that you have your content inside this particular folder web. So it cannot able to fetch this content. Now in this case, if you have your content in any folder other than on root, 
of your bucket, you have to specify this over here. Yesterday, we didn't touch this particular option. Why? Because we use this particular folder, sorry, particular bucket and and we have our home page on the, on the root of the bucket. So, we just skip this. Okay, but now, I hope you got this complete idea. Then you have to specify name, name of your cloud run distribution. It can be any name that you want to provide. Okay. Then we have this particular option, add custom header. Again, it is optional. Now let's understand this. And let's start chapter number three, add custom header. Now, this is the most important part. You may get question about this as well. So let me explain you this using mind map. Then I'm going to use my picture and explaining you this. A custom header is an additional piece of information that CloudFront can send to your origin. The custom header can contain any information you want to pass to your origin. This information can be authentication, versioning information, debugging information and custom logic. Now, let me explain you this using this particular picture. You will get better understanding about it. Okay, see, what is the system we have? Here, cloud front is going to this origin. It can be any, but here we are using S3 bucket as origin. Now, when it will go to the origin, it will ask origin, hey, I want to fetch content, static content, and I want to distribute this content to all this age location. Now, sometime you want to specify that, hey, I want to want information from version 1 only. You have version 1 and 2, but I want to fetch information from version 1. So, how you can specify that I want to fetch information about version 1? So, you have to add a header here. Using this header, when CloudTrain will go to the origin, it will use this particular header and from this header, the S3 bucket will find out that, okay, you are looking about version 1 or version 2 information. I will provide you this. Sometime, because of the security region, your origin will not provide you any content without keys. Let's say that API key. So, how you can pass API key? CloudFront will use header over here. We can add uh, key into the into the header. Now, whenever CloudFront will go to the any origin to fetch this information, fetch, uh, like origin can verify this authentication information from the header and it will provide this content to this particular CloudFront. So, this is like a main use case. Now, it is up to you if you have this kind of re information required. It can be for any reason, you can specify. Now, you can go to the header, you can add header, you can provide header name. And you can add a multiple header as well if you want to add. Okay. These all settings are totally required based on specific use case. Here, I also providing you example. Let's say that you have back and server required API key for authentication. You want CloudFront to include this API key in every request is sent to the server. Right. So for authentication information, sometimes versioning information, all this you can pass out to the origin from the cloud front distribution. So this is all about chapter number three, add custom header. Now let's talk about chapter number four, enable origin shield. If you go to the cloud front distribution, here you will get this particular option. You have two options over here, no and yes. What will happen if you are going to select no? And what will happen if you are going to select yes? Here they provided us this particular definition for this as well. Origin sealed is a feature of CloudFront that provides an additional layer of caching to reduce the load of your origin server. Tell me truly, are you able to get anything from this particular line? When, whenever you read this kind of line, you know you are not able to get anything. Like it is always confusing. But in this particular case, pictures are giving us real clarity. Here, I have two pictures. The first picture is saying, what happened if you are going to select no here? And the second setting will tell you what happened if you are going to select yes over here. 
Once you will see this picture, your answer will be crystal clear for sure. So, let's understand this. Sorry, sorry, I know that you want to watch full video, but full video is now not available on YouTube. If you want to watch full video, I want you to go to our website. When you will go to our website, you will find out our course 100 days YouTube challenge. I want you to enroll for this course by paying only 499 rupees for lifetime if you are from India. If you are from outside of India, you just need to pay 7 US dollar. Once you will enroll to this course, you are going to get all full videos over there on our portal. You are also going to get certificate after completing the course and we have just uploaded 120 videos. We are going to upload another 120 videos as well. So there will be total 240 videos. I hope we are going to meet inside the class. Thank you very much.